When we think of UK dairy farming, it conjures up images of happy cows grazing on lush green pastures, being lovingly milked by a local farmer. I'm Joey Carbstrong. I decided to visit a few local dairy operations to see if that image of dairy farming matches reality. That's terrible. It feels quite horrible to hold this in my hands. These are all the female calves. Having the life sucked out of her slowly. It's eye-opening. This is just mass exploitation here. We might have to make a quick getaway. And they're taken from their mothers so that people can take their milk essentially and drink it. Innocent prisoners of the dairy industry in the UK, born into solitary confinement. You can see them desperately walk, walking around, pacing up and down, hitting the side of the cage. Right, so here we are, these are where the mothers are kept. They could hear their babies, 100% hear their babies calling out for them. And they're in here. This is the sadness of the dairy industry, separating mothers from babies. They'll never see each other again. So how the hell is this imprisonment and exploitation camp justified? You know what I mean? How are we still doing this, human beings? doing this to these little infants, innocent infants. We've pushed it far enough, I think. Yeah, of course. So immediately, I was confronted with the sad reality of calf and mother separation that is a fundamental part of the dairy industry. Studies show that both mother and calf experience emotional pain or noticeable stress after separation. Of course cows had to give birth in order to produce milk. And it doesn't make financial sense for farmers to leave calves to drink the milk that is meant for sale. But how exactly does this process begin? I think the next facility I visited holds the answer to that question. Okay, so it's the middle of the night. It's bucketing down with rain here. There's a big field here filled with bulls. And this facility here is a hidden aspect of dairy that isn't much talked about. I'm going to take you into this facility and show you what it is. Let's go. Okay, so a bit of an unexpected turn here. The entire facility has its lights off, usually they're on. So we're kind of walking into the unknown. some tools here on the table. It's hard to make them out. Okay, so we found this. They probably hit the cows with this so that they behave or comply. Alright, so we're inside the um like a storage shed here. 
I can see a, a bin here and it's just filled with different injections for cows and Leptovoid and Unisolve and the amount of syringes and medicines they give to the cattle. This is crazy. This is an ear tagger. Vaseline. Okay, so this is a calf dehorner. I have one here. This here is all charcoal from, what they do is they cauterize the calf's horn. They do this so that the, the horns don't grow big and they don't cause accidents with workers and they don't bruise the carcasses of the other uh, cattle. This is done because they're kept in captivity. This is a horrible torture device and it's for calves, for baby animals. It actually feels quite horrible to hold this in my hand. Colbert, iodine, selenium, so Colbert to give them B12. And how you get B12 in the flesh and in the dairy is uh, they give it to them as a supplement here. Just imagine how much medication is reserved for the dairy industry. Vaccines. Let's see. And then I found an important piece of the puzzle. These are the pipettes used for insemination. So that's the injection device. And they pull this back and inject the semen with this. This is liquid nitrogen. Maybe this is keeping something cool. This could be semen in here. Hit these gloves. The farmer or vet will put this on. They cup their fingers like this and they insert up to their elbow and they hold the cervix of the cow through the anus. Then they'll put the pipette full of semen into her vulva. They put their entire arm nearly in the cow's anus, which is incredibly uncomfortable for the cow and just, it's quite perverse really. The reserve breed champion. They might have uh, some prized breeding bulls here or... They've also got the um, paperwork here. Pneumonia, eye infection, prolapse, 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 foot infection, mastitis, pneumonia, foot infection, prolapse, prolapse, a lot of prolapses here. The foot infections walk around in their own feces and just probably getting injuries like this. Infection following castration. Lame, lame cows. Lameness is a big problem with dairy cows. So this device here is called a balling gun and it's mainly used to force medication down cattle's throat. Sometimes it can be used to force a magnet into their stomach in case the cattle will eat any metallic objects. The metallic objects will stick to the magnet. This looks like a cattle crush. I think the cattle come in through this way, but they come down this chute here, stop here. The gates lock on their head and then they can inseminate them, give them medication, dehorn them, things like this. They do this because the animals struggle. Insemination is obviously uncomfortable for the animals, which is why they need a machine like this for multiple reasons. So they can only go through one way. Once they're in here, they can't go back. This is what this is. There's a system of doors that only let a certain amount of animals through at one time, what it looks like. And they get pushed through here, out there, and they have whatever done to them. And they move on to the next one. So we're seeing a lot of equipment that's usually used in dairy farms. But this place wasn't a dairy farm. So what was it? So this place here, they're inseminating the females to get more males to use for their semen. Subcontractors, they come and in one day they inseminate 50 cows. So they don't bring the cows here? No, they, they send out the semen to those subcontractors that impregnate cows. The reason they are inseminating cows here is only to breed more bulls yeah. that will make yeah. up a sperm herd. Wait. Hold up. So you're probably a little confused. Let me explain. This place is a breeding facility where they breed stud bulls who will produce semen, most likely for beef. But what has that got to do with the dairy industry? Semen is usually taken from dairy breed stud bulls by either an artificial vagina or an electroejaculator, which sends an electric current into the anus of the bull forcing him to ejaculate. This semen is then distributed to dairies all over the UK where they will impregnate cows with it. Conventional semen only gives farmers a 50% chance of birthing a female. Female calves would make up the dairy herd. If born male, 
They'd usually be culled on the farm or sent off for veal or beef. Male dairy breed calves obviously don't produce milk or a high yield of beef, and killing them on the farm can sometimes be more cost effective for the farmer. But since routine culling of male dairy calves has been outlawed in 2021, farmers have until the end of 2022 to end this practice. So how will dairy farmers get around this issue and still maximise profits? The answer is sexed semen. Sexed semen gives a 90% chance of producing females and reduces unwanted male dairy calves. Dairy cows have around three to four calvings before being slaughtered for their flesh. But what happens when farmers are not in need of more female calves? This is where semen from beef cattle comes into it. Farmers can opt to impregnate their dairy cows with semen from beef sires, which will produce crossbred calves that are genetically ideal for beef. This way, the cows are still being impregnated to keep the milk flowing, but on top of this, dairy farmers will also be able to maximise their profits from the specific calves their dairy herd produces. I'll let this farmer explain. So over the past two years, we've been using exclusively just sex semen and beef semen. The reasons for that is that we want to maximise our genetic gains. So we're only serving our best cows um, to sex semen. Everything else gets served to beef. And the upshot of that is that we're producing a better quality calf, uh, beef calf, which we sell for more money, which in, um, improves our bottom line. Well, there you go. They want to maximise their bottom line. Everything farmers do is to maximise their bottom line. In my opinion, I don't think they stopped killing bull calves on farms for welfare reasons at all. I think they did it for economic reasons. So directly behind me is a big facility here at this sperm farm. It's surrounded by massive gates, huge fence, 10 foot fence, covered in bushes. It looks like a big prison. I'm just gonna go sh try to show you guys because there's cameras all around this thing. What is that, dude? here they must store it in there because the sperm must be worth so much money so how much is the sale of semen really worth i did a little digging into some of uk's leading semen distributors i found prices ranging from as low as six pounds per straw for semen collected from a limousine breed 36 pounds a straw from a holstein breed and some breeds were fetching up to 100 pounds per straw so let's do the math on average, a Holstein bull can produce 80,000 to 110,000 straws of semen annually. So in theory, a stud bull could make a semen producer between 660,000 pounds all the way up to 11 million pounds per year. Garth, a one-ton bovine stud from a farm in Kent, once called Britain's biggest cash cow, produced 800,000 pounds of semen every month. As stated in this article from Canada, where they export more than $100 million worth of semen from super studs every year, Bull semen is like white gold. A bull with a star pedigree can produce money shots worth $50,000 each. That's $600,000 a month. There's even been reports of thieves targeting semen, as stated in this Mirror article. Semen is not only extremely valuable for direct sale, but is an integral part of the dairy and beef industries. Without it, the whole industry would collapse. No wonder this place was like Fort Knox. You gotta think the amount of selective breeding these, these animals have you know, a valuable genetic line. They're keeping it all in these, in this high security. It's eye opening. Okay, so I've had to. Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay, we're just uh, waiting back because there's a light on and it's. Uh... We're on high alert because um, 
we might have to make a quick getaway. to see anything in here, it's completely pitch black. Hello darling. Hello. Can you see all the eyes? <laughs> Hello. The others are all back there, kicking back. But this one here is brave. They're very cautious, aren't they? Hey, buddy. So these, these are really big balls. These are used for their semen. Take the semen from these bulls, probably distribute it, use it to inseminate females here too. Like they're breeding more bulls to continue that genetic line. They look big and uh, scary, but they're really super gentle, timid, shy, vulnerable animals, very easily dominated by humans. This is where things get interesting. As we were walking to go approach the dairy farm, we seen a worker with a flashlight walking around looking for us. I had to turn off my camera and we all hid in a ditch. I didn't really expect to be spending my Saturday night hiding in a ditch. But that's just the way it turned out. After about 30 minutes, the coast was clear and we had to abort the mission. Although the first attempt left me startled, I really wanted to film in a large, intensive UK dairy farm. So, even with the high risk of getting caught, I decided to attempt it again a few nights later. This is the second try. <laughs> The last time we attempted this a couple of nights back, someone walked straight past us. We think we alerted them somehow, but we had to take cover and then abort the mission. So we're going to try again tonight, see how we go, see if we can show you what happens in these big mega dairies in the UK. Still really young. Look at this baby. 
Their mothers are all over here in these barns. So they can hear their calves calling out for them. And they can't reach them. How, how sickening. How sad. Look at this little baby here. Hello, darling. I can smell something in here. Like a dead body. There's a dead body around here. Look at this. At any one time, approximately 25% of all dairy cows are lame. And over a one year period, there will be around 55 cases of lameness per 100 cows. It's okay, darling. And the whole back of her body is just skin and bones. So, I'm not sure what they've got her kept in here. They might be, she might be ready to be cold. The fate of UK male dairy calves is either to be reared for beef, live exported to Europe for veal, or until the end of 2022, they can still be shot on the farm. As these boys were kept separate with an injured cow who is most likely going to be culled, and since the ban of shooting calves on farms had not come into force yet, I did not have a good feeling about the imminent fate of these babies. This is where all the mothers are, pregnant mothers about to give birth. This pen here is for carving. One of the cruelest inhumane parts of the dairy industry is the separation of the calf from their mother. Like humans, cows have a nine month pregnancy and like other mammals, they have a very strong maternal bond with their baby. Yet across the board in the dairy industry, calves are taken immediately after birth. This facility was so large, it was mind-blowing. Some more calves there. So in here is a milking parlour. It's a big, round one. I think this thing rotates. Um, it's one of those big circular milking parlours. Massive exploitation machine. Can you hear the, can you hear the cow? According to the AHDB, mastitis, which is a painful infection of the udder, has an incidence rate of around 30 cases per 100 cows a year. And a lot of the time that pus, the somatic cells can be sucked out with the milk. They pasteurize it with the somatic cells in there. Pretty gross and that's one of the main reasons they cull the animals as mastitis or infertility or production of milk declining as well. So they exploit these animals until there's nothing left of them, literally. They suck the life out of them. You see them all skinny and skin and bone and limping around lame. And then they go straight to the slaughterhouse. You know, no mercy, just shot in the head and cut up into pieces. And you know, the flesh of dairy cows, spent dairy cows, will go to burgers or second grade minced up burgers in McDonald's or something like this, you know. It's what they do to these animals. They, take everything from them and then when then when there's nothing left to take from them they take their life from them as i left the milking parlor i could see rows and rows of calf hutches i decided to walk over and investigate baby 
puppies. Hundreds of babies. These are all the female calves, the real little babies. They're kept in solitary confinement here, I think for around six weeks, but sometimes they've been left in there for months and months on end. Sometimes you see really big calves in here. Um, but their mothers are over there and um, not too far away from them. You can hear them calling out, little desperate, little desperate calves, looking for their mother, looking for their milk. So small, this is like a, a tiny prison cell for them. As soon as these uh, females are able to bear young, they'll be impregnated too, and uh, they'll have their calves taken. It's a horrible cycle of trauma. Look at this, all of this for milk, cheese, chocolate. Imprisoned for nothing, imprisoned for being born a cow. As I walk through the vast maze, rows after rows of hundreds of crying babies, the sheer scale of the suffering dawned on me. This was just one farm in one part of England. Yet, as of 2020, there are nearly 12,000 registered dairy producers in this country alone, and around 100 million dairy farms all across the world. How did we allow this to happen? All of this misery and cruelty taking place right under our noses. Look at how humans are separating families. And for what? A slice of cheese, a dash of milk, or a piece of chocolate? I was feeling completely overwhelmed, but I had one more section of the farm I needed to visit before I left. Okay, so we're making our way into this big shed. This big shed has all the mothers. So I could probably throw a stone from where all the babies are in those individual hutches, calling out, calling out to the mothers. That's how close they are. They can hear each other all day. That's incredibly cruel. Can you, can you imagine being separated from your baby and have to hear them crying for you and you can't nurture them? The first thing I can notice is the smell, the stench is really bad. Looks like thousands of animals on this farm. This is a mega dairy. It's huge. Hundreds of suffering mothers, as far as the eye could see. Slaves to the dairy industry. Milk machines that'll be exploited and slaughtered. Numbered property. As you can see the, by her udder, you can tell how large and flamed it is with just producing more milk than they just naturally would. You can imagine how uncomfortable that would be on their hips and their bones and their joints just carrying all this milk around. You can actually see how much they're struggling walking around on this cold, wet concrete. And uh, I understand why they get injuries and lameness. sick, something wrong with her stomach. Because that was the most, that was just wet diarrhea, so. It's okay. It's okay. I tried to walk as slow as I could, so as not to startle the cows. It's okay. They seemed very uneasy.
They seem incredibly spooked for, for cows who are so used to being handled by people. You know, it wouldn't be unusual for people to be walking through here. It's a dairy farm. They just seem spooked, like... They're afraid of getting hit or something. Imagine how exhausting it would be to be her carrying all that weight around in her udder. Lost how many children now? Like, how many cycles has this cow been through? Losing her calf. And going to that rotating milk parlour every day. Laying on this, on this hard concrete, listening to her calf bellow out to her. Hello darling. Following us. Look at her back here. This is like incredibly skinny hay. I know these breeds are gonna be lean in the back anyway, but look at this. This is this is too skinny. Like having the life sucked out of her slowly. If you look on the floor here, it's just layers of urine and feces and uh, yellow. It's all yellow, and they they walk around in it. So they're walking around wet feet. If they get a, the slightest scratch on their ankle, it's going to become infected. You can just see that when they're walking, that they are not stable. Their bodies are so heavy and their bones become so weak because they're just having the nutrients just sucked out of them constantly. Their bodies begin to give up and then they can go down and then they'll be removed with a forklift and go to the slaughterhouse. What, what human beings have done to their bodies, it's just inhumane. It's absolutely shocking to walk through one of these in the UK, hey. They pride themselves on these free roaming cows and you know, ultra humane dairy farms, and then you walk through one of these, and you're like, oh my god! Like how many people are consuming dairy at a place like this and don't even realise? You know, all dairy farms are horrible just because of the suffering they cause to their mother and the calf, and it will be slaughtered in the exploitation. But this one in particular, there's something about it is just—it's just worse. It's getting towards about the time farmers start to wake up and tend to the dairy cows but I still felt like there was unfinished business here so I continued to look around. I had a feeling they were killing animals on site, but there was no time to investigate. Dozens of workers lived on site at this dairy farm and they'd be awake any moment. So unfortunately, we had to leave. As I walked out and left all those suffering animals behind, I thought to myself, how much longer will humanity continue to exploit these gentle, vulnerable beings? For needless products we have alternatives for. When will the public evolve past the subjugation of animals? When will the good-hearted people of the world live vegan?